Hey friends, welcome to Hot News. It's a glorious Tuesday. The sun is shining. We finally got two deliveries that we have been waiting months for. Our de Noble Chairs delivery and our EK Water Blocks delivery. So we have a lot of projects that we're working on over on the UFD Tech channel, but you're here for Hot News. And I'm gonna give that to you after I tell you about today's video sponsor, which is our website, UFD Deals. Because in case you wanna save money on the internet, on tech products, you can go to UFD Deals to find the best deals on the tech products for your computer, your monitor, your peripherals, whatever you want on the website. There's an affiliate link for each one. We get a small kickback, you save money, everybody wins in the end. So go to UFD.tech or the link in the video description to check that out, save money, we make money. And we're gonna talk about other things that are making other companies money, such as AMD and PlayStation. The PlayStation 5 APU benchmark scores have actually come out. This is thanks to one of the world's most famous leakers at this point, Tom Apasek, who finds all of these obscure numbers that are hiding in benchmark databases, and then he reveals them to the world for us to interpret however we will. And what we see is that according to the score on the AMD Gonzalo APU, which is the Ryzen Zen 2 based CPU plus a Navi GPU, what we find is that it has a score that is four times more than a PlayStation 4, and it actually beats a GTX 1080 according to its 20,000 point score, which is absolutely crazy. Now you might be wondering, how is that possible when, you know, like an RX 5700 XT is gonna tie with a GTX 1080? How is that like really going to happen? The only thing that I could possibly think is one, somehow the benchmark is skewed towards AMD products, or two, potentially, one of the reasons why the new next generation consoles are waiting until next year is because they're receiving a version of Navi that isn't coming out yet. It actually might potentially be a full RDNA setup rather than just the uh, RDNA mixed with the instruction set from GCN. In case you don't know what I'm talking about, we did a hot news video on it right up there that you can check out. Or alternatively, it could just be a better setup for Navi than what we're expecting expecting and that it's like it could still just be the same Navi based GPU but they figured out how somehow like they're going to get it on 7 nanometer EUV lithography so it's technically faster and more efficient than what's out right now or it's one benchmark score that won't actually relate to real world performance and it probably won't be as good as a 1080. All of those are possibilities, but according to leaked benchmarks on the APU right now, the PlayStation 5's future is looking pretty gosh dang good. And if the rumors are to be believed, it's actually gonna be faster than the next generation Project Scarlet. But we'll have to wait and see as I hit my laptop yet again. Then let's talk about more Sony stuff, which it appears that the games company also camera company because we're using a Sony camera. They also make smart. Anyways, the company might be looking to acquire game development studios just like their friends over at Microsoft for the Xbox team. So it's one of those indications right now that Sony might be going out of its way to acquire game studios to hopefully in-house some projects. But even if they don't, they've been doing quite a good job with all of their first party stuff. So I'm not necessarily sure they need to do this, but it could make it easier for them to compete with games next generation. I don't know, we'll find out. Speaking of next generation stuff, it appears that uh, Robert Halleck of AMD has given a more detailed explanation of how Precision Boost Overdrive will work on the next generation of Ryzen 3000 processors. In case you want to watch the video by him, you can click the link down below or that corner right up there, and you can check it out in case you want the nitty gritty details of how automatic overclocking is going to happen on AMD stuff. But then, this is probably the most handiest thing I have seen in quite some time. In case you are asking the question of if my B350, X370, X470, B450 can run a particular Ryzen 3000 chip, a helpful Redditor who uh, has been known to create motherboard tier lists based on the VRMs has created one specifically for whether or not older generation motherboards can handle specific Ryzen 3000 CPUs. So if you wanna check out that chart, we left a link in the video description it is quite useful to see that uh, there are plenty of X470s that can handle the 3950X. There's a couple X370s that can do it, actually mostly from Asus, but uh, yeah, in case you want that, check the link down below. And then let's go ahead and talk about uh, the RX 5700XT. Uh, apparently, AMD has stated that they're gonna be using either Samsung or Micron 
Amazon GDDR6 VRAM for the cards. And in case you don't know why that would be important, it creates this issue where some quality of VRAM might be different than others. Samsung is typically regarded as being the better of the two. Micron is not necessarily bad. It can meet the minimum specifications, but then things such as overclocking headroom or undervolting potential just are kind of eliminated with a lower quality VRAM chip. So we'll have to see uh, whether or not it's gonna be primarily Samsung or primarily Micron, or if it's a 50-50 split, but you're gonna have a lottery as to whether or not you're getting the best possible ARC 57. Uh, XT. In case you care at all about Intel's GPUs, they've unleashed a couple new renders that you could check out for what they would say is their new GPUs coming out. It's just renders. We don't know what the actual GPU is going to look like. They've been throwing these things out to the wind with like multiple different designs all the time. So we'll see how it actually looks in about a year. But in case you want to know about Moore's Law, the transition here is Intel. This is also an Intel thing. Intel's Jim Keller, also also known as AMD's Jim Keller and Tesla's Jim Keller. Well, now he's Intel's Jim Keller. Anyways, he gave a talk at the Silicon 100 Summit and he went on to state that Moore's Law isn't dead. It's actually fairly aggressive. And he talked about how that you can get 50 times gate density when it comes to transistors and making new CPUs. So he's confident that it's not dead, even though technically we've already lost to it. And Intel has been losing anyways. They haven't increased their transistor density in like a while, so I don't know. But you know who does know something? Asus, Asus UK. Bad transition again. Anyways, they are starting a new trade up program, at least in the UK department, from July 1st until the end of August. You can trade in your NVIDIA GPUs and pick up other NVIDIA GPUs. There's a whole list chart for how things go. They have good, better, best for trade in quality and all of that kind of stuff. You can trade a GT 1030, a GTX 750 Ti, a 950. There's a confusing chart you can look at in case you want to know how things work. It's, I, I don't live in the UK, so I don't care, but in case you guys do, you can uh, take advantage of this program for ASUS. Anyways, then let's talk about Samsung. They apparently have released the invitations to their Galaxy Unpacked event, which will uh, take place on August 7th, obviously, with the stylus that's on the screen. We're expecting it to be the Note 10. We've already had some leaked renders, so this isn't necessarily such a huge deal. But what is a huge deal is when a CEO of a company says they stuffed up, which is what Samsung CEO has said with regards to the Galaxy Fold, stating that it was indeed way too early. They rushed it probably to beat Huawei to the market on their foldable phone, but we all know what a disaster it has turned out to be. It's possible that they could also uh, give a release date for the Galaxy Fold at this Galaxy Unpacked event, or it could be that they're just gonna shut up about it and never talk about it again and it never existed, kind of like those ET games. Just put them all in a landfill. Speaking of things in a landfill, Russia, they're developing hypersonic missiles, but apparently they're gonna only be able to make 60 of them, even though they can evade the US's anti-missile stuff because they're so fast going at, what is it, five times the speed of, 20 times the speed of sound, crazy. Anyways, apparently the only reason that they're only gonna be able to make 60 of them and they're having issues even developing those is because the source of carbon fiber for the actual missiles is not good enough to withstand the high speed and it's just way too expensive. So yeah, Russia's not gonna take over the world with these things, apparently. But you know what else, is, you know what is gonna take over the world, AI. And MIT has created a program which you can actually download now as a free demo called GAN Paint Studio, where it's kind of like the thing that Nvidia showed off at their thing where you just kind of say, I want this here, and then it'll put a tree there for you. Or if you want to get rid of stuff, it'll get rid of things for you and then just kind of AI replace the background. Obviously, it's not going to be perfect, but MIT is developing it to hopefully eventually work for video so that uh, film studios can use AI to just kind of put a prop in the scene that they were supposed to have there, but they forgot. This is given a whole new meaning to fix it in post. Yeah, yo. And then in case you care about esports at all, and then even further down the list, in case you care about Call of Duty at all, uh, apparently it has been announced that LA and Minnesota are getting their own Call of Duty esports franchises, uh, trying to make it more like traditional sports where you have geographical region based teams and not necessarily just like the five best players in the country. So in case you care, 
There you go. And then India apparently has been working on their first CPU. It's a RISC-V CPU, and now it is currently available for app development. So it's good to start working on it in case you guys care at all about that. India is working on making CPUs. And you know who else is working on making CPUs? Apple, but you know what they're not doing? Making their stuff work because apparently there has been a discovered issue with the logic board on the 2018 MacBook Air, which is the thing that Reese rocks, and they are potential, like you can go get it fixed because it's broken and there's a replacement program, but they're not really talking a lot about it. But Apple, yet again, making things that explode, things that break, keyboards that don't work, and your product experience is gonna be worse because Johnny Ive just left Apple and you're gonna be screwed because he was the genius who made everything look really good. Now everything's just gonna look like a normal PC. And then what's Apple gonna have? Just a high price tag and a cheese grater. You can have all the cheese you want. Cheese. We'll go somewhere where there's cheese. And then CD Projekt Red has been confirmed to be working on three cyberpunk projects, including the next AAA title, which is quite good. I just want Cyberpunk 2077 to get here already, but obviously we have a release date, which is nice. April 16th, 2020, we're all excited. And then we've got some pictures of The Witcher Netflix film series, TV series, series that's coming out. Anyways, the promotional images, I actually, I'm really surprised at how much I like Henry Cavill as Geralt. He, he's looking really good. I saw, a, I think it was a Reddit post saying, oh, this would look like a great Rhaegar Targaryen. And then all of the comments were like, no, Rhaegar Targaryen was way too pretty looking for this. And then they were like, you know who he would make? A good Bobby B, Robert Baratheon in his old days when he's taken over the kingdom. Henry Cavill would have looked perfect like that. Be too fat for your armor. <laughs> 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 Anyways, uh, a lot of people are complaining that uh, he only has one sword, but that's because you guys haven't read the book, which is what the Witcher TV series is adapted from, not the video games. Geralt didn't carry two swords on him. He only carried one, and then he put the other one on Roach. So in case you're complaining about the one sword, it's because it's on the horse. And it's time for me to get off the horse. Now that's the end of Hot News. Don't forget to check out UFD Deals if you want to save money. Don't forget to watch Hot News all the time in its entirety. Give us that watch time. Really appreciate it. Also, give us the like. Just smash the button. That's how you smash things. And get subscribed. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the notification bell. Just, you know, so you never miss an upload of Hot News, please. I'm Brent with the Hot News channel. You've just been fed out of your smiling faces. I'll see you again tomorrow. I love you too. Bye.